Welcome to another segment of Under the Microscope. I'm Jeff Gold, and today's subject is the Interprofessional Academy of Educators. I'm joined today by two of my colleagues, Dr. Howard Liu, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Faculty Development, and uh, Dr. Greg Karst, who's the Assistant Dean in the College of Allied Health Professions. Welcome, and thank you so much for being with us on this segment. Thank you, Dr. Gold. Thank you. So tell our audience a little bit about the uh, Academy and why it's so important and the impact of the fact that it's truly interprofessional. Clearly, just having both of you here from two different colleges as members of the Advisory Council it almost by default makes it interprofessional. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's been a journey actually for actually many leaders over time. Uh, we've had uh, leadership from the College of Pharmacy in the past. We've had leadership from uh, Dr. Myrna Newland, the prior Director of Faculty Development. And really, the Advisory Council has um, membership from all of our different uh, the colleges and, and uh, institutes as well. And I think uh, Dr. Kars can tell more about the interprofessional aspect. We do have uh, activity with all of our colleges and institutes. And we're very interested in not only uh, faculty who are on the Omaha campus, but also engaging alumni and also some who, many of who serve as preceptors, and also some of our uh, uh, other campuses as well. So for somebody that isn't familiar with the concept of the Teaching Academy, uh, what is it role? What is it, you know, if you're out in uh, Kearney or if you're, uh, you know, in, involved in one of our research labs or a clinician in one of our health system sites and they're watching this uh, under the microscope segment and they're saying what is teaching academy how would you describe that you know i would say it's a fulfillment of a promise we're making to all of our students that we're going to have really a world-class standard of education uh, every classroom and i would say every clinic they're in that those faculty staff and preceptors have access to the best teaching techniques um, from the faculty end of things, it's also really a chance for them to have a community of colleagues that are passionate about educational research, and we really want to double the scholarship that's occurring on campus in terms of mm -hmm. publications and national presentations and grants. Mm -hmm. And how does this connect to the IXL program? Because I understand that they're, they're linked in a, not just in a faculty development sense, but also in a philosophical sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the IXL Center is really going to be a, a, a premier center for educational technology, simulation, virtual reality, other immersive technologies. This is going to be the crew that runs that ship. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have volunteers from faculty end, student end, and staff end, and really I think they're going to be the ones that are going to be showing everyone how to use that technology and how to make the curriculum out of it. So I understand that the Advisory Council uh, for the Academy is actually looking to recruit two critically important leadership positions at this time. Is that right? That's right. Uh, there's two positions, and uh, they are going to be the director and an education researcher. And the director is actually going to be someone from our very campus who's going to spend part of their time setting up the Academy, recruiting its first class, and really inspiring folks to mm -hmm. join the Academy. And the education research is really going to be more about the scholarship end of things, and and really making sure that we are publishing from these findings and really leading the world in some of the research end. So if we have faculty either on the Omaha campus or on any of our clinical or academic campuses that want to get involved in the academy, how would they do that? Uh, we are currently working on membership criteria and the procedure for applying and we will be publicizing that as soon as we have the director in place and uh, finalize those uh, requirements. So do you envision a website and uh, materials? Uh, you know, I've, I've seen this really lovely uh, publication titled the UNMC Interprofessional Academy of Educators, uh, October 2014. It really is a major thought piece that formed the basis of structuring the academy and, uh, and of course, the financial support of it. Uh, are these available to faculty or to staff who are interested in more information? For sure, there's a website with all these educational materials on the faculty development website and um, several things. Uh, so one can certainly download the PDF and that's mm -hmm. widely available. Um, but there's going to be set up 10 learning communities and right now we have two of them already standing 
uh, on simulation and ed technology. And faculty from all across our 500 mile campus can join and really participate. Also be open to students and staff as well. So we really think it'll be very inclusive. And there'll be some real projects that will come out of it. For example, one of our first ones we're looking at is going to be a guide for clinical preceptors that are alumni and, and uh, supervising our students and really having a chance for them to look at what are the best tips for them to use their supervision time well. Super. Well, thank you for so much being with us today. And thank you for being with us today on this segment of Under the Microscope.